what is going on everybody my name is nico and welcome back to another pokemon scarlet and violet guide video today i want to talk about raids in pokemon scarlet and violet because this is a topic of extreme conversation right now with the existence of these seven star raids and how difficult these are actually turning out to be for a lot of players who maybe don't have a uh, background in competitive battling and really understand a lot of the deeper mechanics of pokemon so i want to break down and kind of talk about raids in general and talk about how these are actually working in the game and how you can be more successful and win more games but if this is your first time here on the channel make sure you are sub for daily pokemon content here from me all the time and be sure to check out the discord where people over there playing pokemon all the time but let's get into it so we've had two seven star raids and these are really the ones that are causing the most difficulty because these are the most challenging form of raids in the game we had the charizard obviously first and then we had the cinder race this last weekend that will have another weekend coming up i believe it's the weekend of the 13th these are very very difficult because these require a different level of strategy and what makes these so challenging is that this is a new style of content for pokemon the fact that these are team based it's a form of pve content versus you know pokemon in general is just a very solo game you're playing either through the game by yourself you're playing on the competitive ladder by yourself these require teamwork with the people that you are playing with so these could be very difficult because of the fact that you know if one of your teammate dies you lose time on your timer for the raid and you are less likely to actually end up completing that raid which leads to a lot of frustration and anger surrounding different pokemon being brought to these raids but i want to make this video to help people understand how raids work how you can think about building pokemon for raids and obviously i'm going to be covering mainly the seven star stuff because this seems to be the most difficult aspect of the game but you could take this knowledge and apply it to six star raids and things of that nature because those are also fairly challenging and the same concepts can apply so for the particular cinder race raid since it's the most fresh in everyone's mind right this is something that we have been seeing a lot of we've been seeing an absolute ton of this it's been a psychic type it's Slowbro. Slowbro with 252 hp 252 defense and four special attack the reason is Slowbro is just very defensive in general against the cinder race because it's a fire fighting uh combo here you know mainly you're going to be getting uh fire stab from pyro ball and then you're going to be getting high jump kick stab from the fighting terra type this pokemon handles both of those phenomenally now a lot of people have been running this set, which is Stored Power, Iron Defense, and Nasty Plot. Now, the idea behind this particular set is that you run Iron Defense three times. It's going to make you super bulky. You're going to be able to take a bunch of hits from Cinderace. And then you're going to be using Nasty Plot three times as well. And with these bonuses, Stored Power, which gains plus 20 power from each of the user stat boosts, is going to do even more damage. Plus, you have the Psychic Stab, and you're going to be able to use Psychic Terra type if you've already used a little bit of damage. Let's say you have, like, Chilling Water or something. I doubt you're using Chilling Water on this set. But let's just pretend for a moment, right? This is so common because this does so much damage. However, the issue with this is, like I said at the start of this video, that this is a team-based game. Raids are team-based. You have to work together in order to successfully complete them and complete them efficiently, right? This is very strong, but it doesn't work with the team well. For one, Iron Defense only defends you. You only gain stat buffs on this particular Pokemon. Then you have Nasty Plot. Again, you're buffing it, but you're only gaining special attack on your Pokemon. So you're not really doing a whole lot for the team outside of doing big damage. But if you're not defending them with Iron Defense or Nasty Plot, and you're only defending yourself, those other Pokemon are going to get knocked out and your timer is going to go away very quickly. And this particular set requires a lot of setup. This is seven turns in order to get three of these off, three of these off, and then one stored power. That's seven turns. And you're assuming that the Cinderace hasn't reset all of your stats anyways at this point, And you have to start completely over. So there's a lot that you have to consider now. I think if you're playing solo, if you're not playing online, that this isn't actually a pretty solid set, you know, because the uh, NPCs do not decrease the timer when they get knocked out and they usually don't do a ton of damage. So using this particular set, if you're running a solo build for Cinderace, this makes a lot of sense. However, if you're playing online, you want to play with streamers or this, that or the other, this is not the way you need to start thinking of how can I benefit my team? And this goes beyond just using attacks and stuff. This goes to like cheering and things like that. I'm going to show you a couple different examples of what I'm talking about here and then kind of explain my thought process. So if you look at the last raid, if we look at Charizard, this was a very common set here. Azumarill with a Citrus Berry because you were going to belly drum up and use huge power with play rough, right? That was going to do big, big damage. But again, it falls into the same issue that stored power Slowbro runs into where this Pokemon does nothing for your team zero things are done for your particular team with this set it is just doing big damage and if you get knocked out or if the stats reset you are now a worthless pokemon right 
there's nothing that benefits the team from running this Pokemon. So alternatively, you have to start thinking about how can I benefit my team? So look at the Doxbun that I ran through the Charizard raids. Doxbun has Howl, which then raises the users and allies attack by one. Now, this worked very well because, you know, you were mainly using a variety of different uh, attackers. For one, you were using Azumarill a lot in Charizards. You were, I saw a lot of Iron Hands for Charizards. So this was really helping the team. These type of moves can change depending on what you're using. Like if you look at Cinderace, Cinderace is running bulk up. Bulk up raises its defensive stats. So you're not really going to be wanting to run a lot of physical attackers. So something like Doxbun isn't going to be very beneficial for your team. However, for Charizard, it was great because we were running again azumarill's uh other dox buns iron hands grim snarls things of that nature we're doing really really well into the charizard raid so how was doing a lot and that raises the entire team's attack stat then we were looking at we weren't running that we were running this right so we were running how play rough helping hand and snarl snarl was fantastic because we were lowering charizard special attack and doing so much for the team we were defending our team by lowering the special attack on the charizard use this a couple times use how once and then use helping hand to buff the rest of the team and then eventually maybe you go in and eventually start play roughing after you were able to unlock your terrestrialization the ability worked very well as well because you weren't able to take any fire blast from charizard and this just made this pokemon incredibly defensive and it made it so your team was getting benefits out of you bringing this Pokemon, right? So Azumarill was able to get even more bonuses, even if the stat changes were in play. You were able to go in and howl and start boosting back up that Azumarill without the Belly Drum. So Azumarill could continue doing its job without Belly Drum in play, which makes this Pokemon so beneficial. You're helping everybody out while still being able to do very good damage yourself because you're using howl, which is still affecting you. And then you're able to play rough with Terrastalization. And that does big damage to Charizard as well. Going back to this particular set, if you're using something like a Zoomerill or a Stored Power Slowbro, imagine everybody on the team running that. You're not going to be getting a whole lot done. Say you, there's three of these, so let's go ahead and copy these. So let's pretend for a minute that you have a team full of these Stored Power Slowbros, right? All of these Pokemon are doing the exact same thing, and then maybe you get a one-off Armor Rouge, right? You get an Armor Rouge, and this Pokemon's here doing its normal thing with like expanding force, and you're going to be using uh, Acid Spray maybe on it. So this Pokemon, right, because none of these Pokemon are doing anything to help the team other than help themselves, this Pokemon's very vulnerable. This Pokemon is going to get knocked out, and because it takes seven freaking turns for these three Pokemon to set up, this Pokemon is going to get wiped enough times that you are still not going to complete this raid because Charizard is going to reset your stats, and it just makes no sense. So you also have to think about, well, if everybody's doing the same strat, what can I be doing to help you more? What can I do to affect the team moving forward? So these are the sets that I've seen the most, and I think these are the most valuable sets in terms of playing effectively and getting the most out of these cinder race raids right so we have a slow bro here this is the exact slow bro that i ran i had a terrain extender on it i didn't care about the ability because it didn't really matter chilling water psychic terrain psychic and nasty plot with a psychic terra typing 252 hp 252 defense and four special attack now this is super super key because Chilling Water lowers the attack stat of the opposing Pokemon by one each time you use it, 100% of the time. That is phenomenal. The reason you're doing this is because of Bulk Up. Bulk Up exists. Now, obviously, if it didn't have Bulk Up, this would be even better because you don't have to worry about continuously spamming it. But because this Pokemon immediately bulks up as soon as you get into the raids and the center race raids, you need to be able to start lowering that and keep your teammates alive. So the course of action for me when I would go in was I was the support i did nothing but help the team so cinderace would bulk up i'd hit it with chilling water two three times depending on how many times it used bulk up in that given order then i would go ahead and set up psychic terrain because at this point i'd be assuming i have an armor rouge maybe another slow bro other things that are going to be benefiting from having the psychic terrain on the field and boosting their attacks by doing this with terrain extender i have a huge time that psychic terrains on the field i'm helping the team out dramatically especially armor rouges that are also playing then i have psychic and nasty plot now these are super nice because eventually at some point after you hit enough chilling waters, you're going to be able to terrestrialize into your psychic type and your psychic hits are going to be doing a lot. Pair this with an armor rouge that is potentially running acid spray and lowering the special defense is that you, your teammates are also helping you get better. They're helping your less offensive Pokemon do more damage, which it just makes for a smoother raid experience. So this Pokemon here is mainly keeping everybody alive. So assuming that Cinderace doesn't do a ton of damage to us, I would maybe opt to go for Psychic Terrain and then maybe into Nasty Plot, right? But let's assume that 
uh, the rest of the team brought something that's a bit more squishy, right? So I hit Chilling Water a couple times. We're looking at it. And then Cinderace has done a decent amount of damage to my teammates. I then opt to Cheer. Cheering is so crucial, and I feel like a lot of people are overlooking this. Uh, cheering is just phenomenal in general because you're able to go in and heal all of your Pokemon up. Everybody gets healed up. And what's the most important thing in these raids? Staying alive because it keeps your timer higher so that way you have more time to actually complete this raid. So if the need calls, because I'm running a supportive Pokemon, this Pokemon isn't doing a lot of damage. I'm going to go in and heal to keep my other bigger damage dealers like Armor Rouge alive. That is just super, super key. Moving on to the next Pokemon that a lot of people are running, and I think this Pokemon's phenomenal for this raid. Twisted Spoon, Flash Fire, Reflect, Expanding Force, Calm Mine, and Acid Spray. 252 uh, HP, 252 Defense, and Modest Nature with 4 in the Special Attack category. This Pokemon just does a lot to the Cinderace. For one, you can't be hit by Pyro Balls, which is absolutely huge. Then you have Reflect to give bonus defense if you want to run that. But I'm saying if you have a, a chilling rain, uh, chilling water, Slowbro, you don't really need to worry about this too much. Then you have Calm Mind at Acid Spray. Acid Spray is your bread and butter here because you're going to be able to maybe not do a lot of damage, obviously, but it's a 100% chance to lower the target special defense by two. This is going to make your expanding forces hit a lot harder. This is going to make Slowbro Psychic Terrain expanding forces hit a lot harder. And it's going to make just Slowbros in general that don't do a lot of damage hit a lot harder. So you're using Acid Spray to not only make your own Pokemon that much stronger, but also make the weaker Pokemon in your party that much stronger because it's just what people are running for this. So this Pokemon, despite being maybe the main attacker in a party for a raid, this Pokemon is still doing so much to benefit the other players on the team. Finally, we have another one that I've seen a lot of people using. I think this is a really fun one. Pelipper, right? 252 HP, 252 defense with four special attack, a damp rock because you're running drizzle. This is going to make pyro balls that much more weak. And you're going to be able to uh, reset that with rain dance. So you got chilling water, hurricane and roost. And this is running very similarly to what you would be doing with Slowbro. So you come out the gate and you hit him with chilling water, chilling water, chilling water, you know, get that bulk up decrease. And then again, look at your party. You can see the health bars, look at your party and go, oh, do I need to cheer here? Do I need to heal everybody? No. Do I need to heal myself? Do I need to roost? No. Cool. Let me go in with Hurricane and start doing damage. And Hurricane's going to hit 100% of the time in this condition because you are using Rain. This is going to not only weaken Cinderace by using Rain, but also means that you can hit Hurricanes really hard as well as potentially confuse the opposing Cinderace. So, uh, again, this Pokemon is not here to do big damage. That's just not what Pelipper does. It's not a terrible special attack stat, but that's not what this Pokemon is designed to do. But because you are using all of these other bonuses, maybe you have an Armor Rouge on your team, and it's using acid spray the whole time you're using chilling water you're able to go in with hurricane and start hitting like a truck so the thing with these three particular pokemon is they all work in synergy to not only make cinderace weaker and keep the other players uh in the battle but they also just synergize to buff themselves as well as others it is super super nice Armor Rouge, despite being the main attacker with Acid Spray, sets up these other not-so-offensive Pokemon to do wonders. And you can take all of this knowledge, take this understanding that I need to work with my team to be better and win more raids, and you can apply that to other things depending on your six-star raids for the day. You can build Pokemon with the idea that, okay, how can I benefit my team while I'm also benefiting myself to complete these raids more effectively? And this is something that you, I feel a lot of people need to start taking into account. Again, going back to the Slowbro, there's nothing wrong with the Slowbro. There, it's a good set, but it doesn't do anything for the rest of your team. So if you're playing by yourself, this is fine. It makes sense. I understand what you're doing. But if you are not running uh, by yourself, if you're running with other people, this does nothing to help them at all. And that makes your team much more vulnerable versus this particular Slowbro set not only benefits you, but it benefits your team as well. And that's something you really need to think about when building Pokemon for these seven star raids. And I think these seven star raids are going to keep coming around. I really do. These seven star raids seem to be incredibly popular. People really like doing them. There's a lot of discourse online regarding them. There's just a lot of interaction with this particular type of content. And it seems like because we got Charizard and immediately got Cinderace afterwards, I feel like this is definitely going to keep coming around. We're going to keep seeing more and more and more of these. And I think personally, it's a fun way 
to play Pokemon. I have been waiting for some harder PvE content out of Pokemon for a very long time, and this is exactly what I was looking for because it gives you a really awesome reward with a perfect IV Pokemon with a hidden ability and all that fun stuff, and you get to continue going in and doing it over and over for these fantastic rewards, especially if you're playing competitive. There's so much benefit to doing these. I really enjoy this type of content. I want to help people do better in them and complete them more successfully moving forward. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. I know it was uh, there was a lot of information here and a lot to break down, but I really hope that this particular video just helps you understand building Pokemon for this side of the game a bit more. If you enjoyed the video, found it entertaining and helpful, leave a like and a comment and let me know your thoughts. Also subscribe for more Pokemon content daily. Like I said earlier, be sure to check out the Discord where people over there playing Pokemon all the freaking time. And and be sure to check out this video where Vaporeon went absolutely crazy on me on the VGC ladder. I, I was not expecting this particular Vaporeon set, and it was quite interesting. Also, check out this video where I battled a Gallade, and Gallade threw me completely off my game. Very, very cool Pokemon to see on the ladder, so check those two videos out. But until next time, peace.